What's up, everybody? Welcome to Beta Update Week 5. This is Wabacha. Let's get started. Now, I'm not going to lie. Doing Beta Update this week was a little difficult because I've been having a lot of fun playing a Crit Ice Nova character on the beta. Now, this is in part due to the, the base crit chance on a lot of spells in the game being increased last week on the beta. It's been a lot of fun, and I'm sorry that I got this video a little bit later than I would prefer to. Carl released his weekly State of the Beta post on the forums this week, and he announced some interesting changes we have coming up. The first change was about punishment. I'm not entirely sure how this works because all we really have is data mine information right now, and I don't know exactly where it would go, but it is changing. Be on the lookout for that. However, what I am more, I am much more interested in is the changes to Shock Nova we have coming up. Shock Nova no longer has a dead zone, but instead it has two rings of damage. One smaller ring and one larger ring with some overlap in between where in the overlap, enemies will take 150% increased damage. Chris also mentioned that the Divination card submission page is up and running. So I'm really looking forward to getting a hold of those first divination cards or seeing what they're going to be. I'm not entirely sure how long the process is going to be from supporter to developer to get these cards onto the servers. As of right now, according to Carl, we are looking at an early July release for The Awakening. So hopefully we could get one into the beta before it ends and we could really start figuring out how to get a hold of these and their strength in Path of Exile. So I was not going to talk about Ice Crash this week. It has been everywhere all over Twitch. There have been tons of videos released about it showing how big its AoE is or its strength, yada, yada, yada. I get it. It's good. And the only reason why I'm talking about it right now is because Kriparian decided to play a little Path of Exile this past week and he combined Ice Crash with Maces and high stun threshold reduction. It was definitely good to see Kriparian come back and play Path of Exile. He seemed to really enjoy it. And I see that as being a very good sign for Path of Exile because it means that they're making a lot of progress on a lot of the old gripes that some of the old players have. And on top of that, Kriparian does bring a lot of traffic to our game. Although a lot of his Hearthstone fans weren't necessarily happy about him making another Path of Exile video, he was specifically saying, hey, if you haven't played this game for a while, come check it out now. And it was also really fun to see him kind of go through the learning curve of everything that he's missed the past year. And it was it was a good video. I'll link it below so you guys could check it out. Noogie this week was playing a Righteous Fire Incinerate build where he achieved a zero mana cost incinerate. Now he did this by combining the reduced mana cost of skill passives on the tree and Elrion jewelry. Now, why this is so interesting is because it actually opens up a nice little spot for reduced mana. Incinerate is relatively low on the mana cost, but if you add reduced mana, you could use spells that are higher in mana cost, such as Ball Lightning. On top of that, Righteous Fire acts as an extra link for your abilities because it gives you a percent more spell damage multiplier while it is active. And finally, when you don't have to worry about mana cost, you're free to not spec into the mana management nodes you generally would, like Deep Thoughts or Eldritch Battery in whatever form it may be. And it frees you up to go into some projectile nodes in the Duelist region and pick up more life regen, things that you generally wouldn't as a spellcaster. This was a cool build to watch, and I look forward to seeing it. I think we're going to see a lot more Righteous Fire and Iron Will builds pop up as time goes on. Speaking of Noogie, he was on State of the Exile this week with Xenocide Genius, Ziggy D, and the Uber Elite. Now, he did talk a little bit about everything he's been doing between the beta and the flashback league, but the Uber Elite has also been talking about his Null's Inclination build and its strengths and its synergies and exactly how it works. He seemed really excited. Ziggy D seemed a little put off by Null's Inclination because it, he says that it's a... It's a clash of two different play styles, which I personally understand, but it looks fun as hell. So definitely go check out State of Exile. It was a nice change to State of Exile to see this depth of knowledge come onto the podcast and everything being so well discussed. Now, the last thing I'm going to talk about this week is the Restless Ward. Now, the Restless Ward is a supporter-created unique chest armor that grants 100% increased endurance, power, and frenzy charge duration. And in addition to this, it gives you 1% increased movement speed per frenzy charge and a flat 15 to 20 life regen per endurance charge. 
Now, although the movement speed is negligible, the 15 to 20 flat life regen per endurance charge is actually very strong. At 4,000 health, it's stronger than some of the life regen nodes that we have on the tree, such as the life regen nodes that we have in the Scion starting area and in the Templar starting area and any other life node that is 0.4% or lower. So if you're looking for a new unique chest or a chest piece that isn't necessarily as offensive as a carcass jack, but isn't as extremely defensive as a cloak of defiance, this chest piece could be the ideal one for you. And on top of that, it brings some unique utility, something that we haven't, we don't really have in chest piece right now. And I look forward to getting a hold of it and trying it out. Thank you very much for watching Beta Update Week 5. I would like to give a shout out to everyone who has helped me with the video this week. Everyone's, a lot of people gave me a lot of insight on how I could improve the quality of my videos. And, you know, I'm looking for any suggestions and feedback at any time. You know, go ahead, follow, like, subscribe, do whatever you'd like, and leave me a comment. Tell me what you think, and I'll see you guys next week.